Hi guys, so my fellow Planet Zoo fans really liked my last video. <laughs> you guys made it the most viewed video on my channel, and it's still doing really well, so thank you. Uh, after I put out that video, Planet Zoo Console Edition was announced, so I'm really happy for those of you who have been asking for it, but it is coming sooner than I expected, and so for a second there, I was admittedly very worried that Console Edition meant the end of support for Planet Zoo on PC. But then, thankfully, during Frontier Unlocked, they confirmed that support for PC isn't quite done yet, so we do in fact still have at least one more DLC on the way, and the way they said, we think you'll be happy with us, makes me hope they have more in store than just one. So because I liked making my last video so much, and to celebrate that confirmation of at least one more pack, I decided to make a follow-up video and extend my Planet Zoo wishlist with 50 more animals. It's funny, I was going to do 40 more, but once again there were some animals that fell toward the bottom of, of this list that I still really wanted to mention. Since this is a direct sequel to my previous video, even though this is a list of 50 animals, keep in mind they are actually number 90 through 41 on my personal wish list. And then if you haven't watched my last video, you can just pick it up from there for the rest of the list. I will tell you that on this list there are significantly less birds and a few more exhibit animals. Uh, we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. Coming in at the bottom of my list is the Linnaeus two-toed sloth. It's pretty obvious that the reason we got the brown-throated three-toed sloth is because it's the most visually iconic species, even though two-toed sloths are actually much more common in captivity. So the Linnaeus, or the Hoffmans, I'd be happy with either, would give us a slightly more realistic alternative. Uh, I also just love sloths so dearly, so I had to mention them. Next is the Jackson's Chameleon, one of two standard exhibit animals that made it into this list. I'm pretty much always going to be more excited for a new habitat animal over a new exhibit animal, so let me know if you guys would want to see a dedicated exhibit animal video. Anyway, I, I think it's a little silly we still don't have a chameleon. I've picked the Jacksons because I think they're so visually interesting, but the panther chameleon would also be great to see. In my last video, I made it a point to bring up petting zoos. While I think goats could hold up petting zoos all by themselves, there are some other animals I'd still love to see that made it into this extended list. A breed of domestic pig would be great. I think the Vietnamese pot-bellied pig is one of the most iconic, and so that's probably what I'd go with, but I'd also love to see the similar Kuni Kuni or the larger Mangalitsa pig. Another walkthrough exhibit animal, we have the Indian flying fox. I think a big third species of bat would be nice, and since we have one that represents Africa and one that represents Oceania, I picked one to represent Asia. Some possible alternatives though would be the Malayan flying fox or the Rodriguez flying fox. Next is the Impala, a really iconic African antelope that sits so low just because we already have so many of these. Uh, still, it's a common and recognizable filler species that would be nice to have so we can toss them into our savanna habitats. The Golden Snubnosed Monkey is a very popular pick for another primate, so even though I know very little about these guys, I've included them since I agree that we need more monkeys. Like the Proboscis though, they're just not common in captivity, so a possible alternative for a second Asian monkey could be the Francois Langer. The second standard exhibit animal that made it onto this list would require quite a unique exhibit variation, but I do think they could still work in the standard exhibit boxes. I'm proposing the naked mole rat, which would be our first mammal in the standard exhibits. They're just so unique and iconic and unlike anything else we have in the game, plus I've seen them at quite a few zoos. I'd really just love to be able to plop them down in my elephant houses or other African buildings. My next petting zoo animal is the Rhode Island Red Chicken, but like how I just want some breed of domestic pig, I'm not too picky about the breed of chicken. The Plymouth Rock Chicken would also be a good pick, and I just have to mention the Silky because they're so funny looking. Yet another petting zoo animal, we have the alpaca, but just like the llama, they don't need to be in dedicated barnyard habitats, so they offer some versatility. South America has so many great picks that even though I covered the continent extensively in my last video, quite a few have still spilled over into this one. Moving away from the petting zoo angle, the guanaco could be a possible alternative, and I'll also mention the vacuna, <laughs> the, the vacuna, <laughs> to cover this whole group. 
A North American animal that wouldn't have been out of place in the Twilight Pack, the Virginia opossum would be another quote-unquote backyard animal like the raccoon and skunk, which I know not everyone cares for, but I still like to have just for options. I also just love possums. I went through a whole phase where I was obsessed with them. I think they are so funny. At number 40, the Japanese raccoon dog, or tanuki, would be a cute and unique canid that would provide company for the Japanese macaque and red-crowned crane if we want to make dedicated Japanese areas in our zoos. I'm not too familiar with this species, but I know there are some people that really want these guys, and they're definitely one of the more interesting canines we could get. The serval is another mid-sized African cat. They kind of look like mini cheetahs. Uh, they do fill the same niche as the caracal, so I don't think they're a necessity, but they're really pretty and I'd be happy to have them. I think our roster of habitat reptiles is actually really good, minus an African crocodile, which I covered in my last video. But beyond that, another crocodilian I'd be happy to see is the Chinese alligator. Right now, the only smaller crocodilians we have are from South America, and so it'd be nice to get one from another continent, and especially the second species of alligator for completionist reasons. We have the red crowned crane from Asia, and in my last video, I proposed the gray crowned crane from Africa. I think the whooping crane could be a third species to represent North America. They're endangered, so they'd be a good inclusion for conservation reasons, but the sandhill crane could be a possible alternative. The kinkajou, like the kawadi, is another unique arboreal species from South America. Also called the honey bear, I think these guys are really cute, and so like the quokka, it's a bit of motivation for Frontier to add them. I think they'd be really nice to have. The bush dog would be another new canid and our second one from South America. Compared to the really tall maned wolf though, these guys are pretty short and stocky, so those two would be fun counterparts to each other. I talked about the spectacled bear last time, and so the last species of bear I need to cover is the North American black bear. A common sight in zoos, they'd be a great addition to our North America roster and a good alternative to the grizzly, but they're mostly here so that I can be a bear completionist. The Western Capricale is a species of bird I was unfamiliar with until I saw people requesting it in their planet zoo wishlist. Basically a Eurasian alternative to the turkey, they're visually striking and I do think these guys would make a great addition to the game's bird roster. Next is the Sugar Glider, another mammal that I think would work really well in the walkthrough exhibits. These guys are adorable and would be another unique species to bulk up our Oceania representation. Since they're popular as pets, they might even work in a petting zoo or a children's zoo setting. Next, I've included the double-crested cormorant because I'd just love to see another coastal marine bird alongside the puffin I proposed last time. They'd just offer some more diversity and I'd give them the ability to deep dive. For possible alternatives, there's the great cormorant. And then I also wanted to throw out the blue-footed booby, another iconic marine bird that originally had its own spot on this list, but since they're non-existent in captivity, I'm just mentioning them as an alternative for this marine bird spot. Coming in at number 30 is the fishing cat, a species similar in size to the caracal and lynx, but a representative of South Asia. I think they'd offer some great diversity. If they were added, we'd have a feline to put in the wetlands areas of our zoos. The muskox is number six on the meadow wish list, so I feel bad for putting it this low. I just don't personally need it, but I do think they're iconic. They'd be some great polar representation, which we haven't had in a long time, and they'd just be a really cool addition to our Arctic themed areas. Next, we have the Great Blue Heron, another species like the mallard duck in my previous video that's less of a zoo animal and more so just to help populate and give some life to our rivers and ponds. A possible alternative could be the Great Egret. I would just really appreciate an ambient North American wading bird. The Southern or Crested Screamer is a tall species of South American waterfowl. I wanted to include these guys because this game needs more birds and more South American representation, and these guys tick both boxes. <laughs> but also, they made an impression on me after I saw them in person, so I'd like to have them. An unlikely but interesting inclusion, the Kakapo, would be a cool addition as the world's only flightless parrot, and another great representative for New Zealand. I think they're really uncommon in captivity, but that hasn't stopped Frontier before, and I think they're a really interesting species. Although a more likely bird from Oceania would be the Victoria crowned pigeon. These guys are native to New Guinea and have really striking blue plumage. I'd love to see them in the game because I believe they're a common sight inside aviaries, which for obvious reasons, we don't have many species for that. 
And then to finish off this little stretch of birds, we have a possible one for the walkthrough exhibits. In my last video, I proposed hummingbirds, macaws, and budgies, but of course there are some more species that I think could work in the walkthroughs. Bee eaters would be a cool inclusion. They're basically the hummingbirds of the old world. And just like hummingbirds, there are a lot of different species that I'm not very familiar with. So I'll just list the European bee eater as one that I want and propose we get four more reskins like the butterflies. The greater kudu is another iconic species of African antelope known for their large size and spiral horns. Like the impala, we have so much African host stock already that it's kind of hard to get excited, but again, they'd just be another great animal to toss into big mixed species African enclosures. I'll throw out the waterbuck as a possible alternative, as well as the sitatunga. Similarly, the garanuk is another African antelope, but they at least have a really unique look to them. They're known for their really long necks and standing on their hind legs to browse, so that could be a fun animation to see implemented in the game. The rock hyrax would be a very unique inclusion. Also from Africa, these guys look like rodents, but they're actually more closely related to elephants. So I'd love to make cool little supplemental hyrax habitats beside my big elephant habitats. Since they like rocky elevation, building for them would also be fun. At number 20, the southern tamandua is a highly requested South American species of tree-dwelling anteater. They would definitely be a unique looking arboreal species similar in size to the Chinese pangolin, uh, and of course some very welcome South American representation. The cockerel safaka would be another really cool lemur species to see in the game. They're a larger lemur and they move in a totally unique way which would be cool to see. That does mean they would need their own rig but I think they'd be worth the effort. These guys are also supported by their iconography thanks to the series Zubumafu. Another bird I'd love to see is the Greater Roadrunner, a terrestrial North American species that would be perfect for arid, desert-themed areas of our zoos. And of course, blah blah, iconography, Looney Tunes, you get it. Next up is the Banded Mongoose, because I love these guys, and I think it'd be cool to have a mongoose species beyond the meerkat. I think the Banded is a good pick because they're common in captivity and have a look that differentiates them from meerkats, but a possible alternative could be the common dwarf mongoose. The giant eland is another African antelope that made my list, but it is in fact the largest species of antelope, which is why I think they'd be exciting to have. These guys are huge. Uh, the common eland is a possible alternative as the second largest species of antelope. Another bird for our walkthrough exhibits, we have lovebirds. I think they'd be really cool additions, similar to how bee eaters are sort of an old world alternative to hummingbirds, lovebirds are sort of an African alternative to budgies. Once again, this is a group of birds I don't know much about, so I'm just going with the rosy-faced lovebird to represent the group, and if we got them, I'd expect some additional species like the butterflies. Another domestic animal for our petting zoos, I'd love to see the Shetland pony. Some of my proposed petting zoo animals have wild-ish alternatives that I've covered, like the turkey, the yak, uh, there's another one coming on this list, but kind of like how I think goats are essential petting zoo animals that don't really have a good alternative, I think ponies fall into a similar boat. I'll throw out the donkey as a possible alternative, but donkeys would be so similar to the Somali wild ass we already have. Uh, I'd personally prefer ponies for the variation they offer. The black buck is another highly requested species of antelope, but this one made it so high because it is an Indian species. I think the game could use more Asian hoofstock, and these guys have a really striking look to them. We have the caracal for Africa and the lynx for Eurasia, but like a lot of other people, I'd love to see the ocelot for a mid-sized South American cat. They'd be similar to the clouded leopard, able to climb really well, but they just offer that little extra South American representation the game still needs. Similarly, we have the doll sheep for North America and the ibex for Europe, so it would be cool to see the markhor as an Asian representative of this rock climbing niche of hoofstock. I think they're the coolest looking of these three animals, and they're another species from the alpine animal pack that never came to be. At number 10 is the Kirk's Dick Dick. Once again, we kind of have this rule of threes going, like I said in my last video, I think we could use these species of tiny hoofstock. I proposed the Pudu for South America and the Muntjac for Asia, so now here we have the Dick Dick for Africa. I like these guys because they have a sort of unique look to them, kind of like the Saiga, but a possible alternative could be the Clip Springer. 
The last potential petting zoo animal on this list, we have the Watusi cattle. I wanted to include a species of domestic cattle, but I'd want one that still has this flair to them, if that makes sense. Uh, and these guys have huge horns and really cool splotchy patterning. The zoo I worked at even had these guys out in an African savanna enclosure with giraffes and zebras. A possible alternative could be the zebu, which are known for their unique hump. I think rodents are a group of animals the Planet Zoo roster hasn't explored enough, and one family has gone completely untapped. I'm proposing the snowshoe hare as our first lagomorph. Okay, editing Sean here. Apparently, lagomorphs aren't rodents. Uh, I've been living a lie, um, <laughs> so I had to record this to correct myself. Uh, they aren't actually rodents. My bad. I don't think they're too common in captivity, but they're pretty iconic, and I think they'd be great additions to our polar areas. Some possible alternatives are the much more intense-looking black-tailed jackrabbit, but if they want to go simple, they could even give us the eastern cottontail. I just think we're overdue for a rabbit in some form. Next up is another rodent, the North American porcupine. Porcupines are actually a pretty diverse group, and I think Frontier did a great job with the African crested, so I'd love to see another species. I picked the North American porcupine as representation for that continent, and they're also an arboreal species, so they offer some variation in how we build for them compared to the African crested. A possible alternative is the Brazilian porcupine, a species from South America, also known for climbing. An uncommon species in captivity, but a great conservation story, I'd love to see the Sumatran rhinoceros as our last rhino species in the game. Sorry to the Javan rhino, but I don't personally need you. Uh, Sumatran rhinos have such a unique look to them, they look almost prehistoric. I think they'd be a great Southeast Asian addition. The American flamingo made it really high in my last video, and this is sort of the equivalent to that. At number 5 we have the North American River Otter, and the reason I'd love to see them is they are by far the most common species of otter that I see in zoos. They would of course be quite similar to the Asian small clawed otter, but the river otter just feels essential to me so I'd love to see it, and I think it would be a great pick for an anniversary animal. The helmeted guinea fowl would be a great addition as a small bird that could potentially be added into our large African savanna habitats, but like the turkey, guinea fowl have also been domesticated and so they'd be a great wild-ish petting zoo alternative to chickens, which is why they landed so much higher than the Rhode Island Red. They serve multiple purposes, which I think is great to see in a zoo animal roster. One more monkey that just missed an inclusion in my last video is the Guianan squirrel monkey. This is another small South American primate which, like I covered extensively in my last video, I think is a group sorely lacking in representation. These guys are about the same size as the capuchin we already have, which is why they're the lowest South American monkey I'm proposing, but they're still really iconic and would be great to see. I always see so much praise for the Oceania pack, and for good reason, but a common opinion I see is people wishing that instead of the quokka, we got a tree kangaroo. The Goodfellows tree kangaroo is sitting at number 4 on the meta wish list, and I feel bad it didn't make my last video. I was just really prioritizing birds because I think that's what the game needs most. Still, I'd love to see a tree kangaroo. Uh, I'd also be happy with the matchies uh, as an alternative. I've seen and I love them both. Number one, we have a feisty African animal, the rattle, or more commonly known as the honey badger. These guys are really cool. I remember how fascinated I was by them when I finally saw them in person. A lot of people have pointed out that Frontier could pretty easily use the wolverine rig for these guys. When it comes to this game, I love my little critters <laughs> for small habitats like the foxes and wombat, uh, and I'd include the honey badger in that group. So yes, the honey badger is my personal number one, or should I say my personal 41? <laughs> like I said, my list picks up chronologically at number 40 in my previous video, so go check that one out if you haven't already. Thank you guys for all the support, I really enjoyed making these, so let me know if there are other Planet Zoo topics you would want me to discuss or speculate about. Um, even if we get more than one pack, I still feel like we're nearing the end for this game, and so I'm glad I could pop onto the scene and toss out my opinions before it's all over, and you guys seem to like them, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But the Sandhill Crane could be a pu- Maggie! <laughs>
<laughs> God damn it. We have the... Oh. Maggie. Please. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. Okay, let's try this again. <clears throat> They're still really iconic and would be great to see. I need to get my cat to stop terrorizing my room. <laughs> 